Dragging his injured leg behind him, a wounded black bear made its way into a village, seeking help. What followed next was completely unexpected. Grandma, Grandma, come quickly. Little Noah Stedman, all of seven years old, was practically bouncing with excitement. Bev, his grandmother, wasn't quite as eager to jump into action. It had already been a long, exhausting morning filled with a series of discoveries. So far, Noah had found a frog, an old flattened tin can in the garden. Mr. Monkey's stray cat, and a chameleon resting on a tree branch. It wasn't her fault that she was nearing 70 and didn't have the energy to match Noah's enthusiasm, but when he said the next thing, she dropped her spatula in disbelief. You've got to see this, there's a bear in the road, Lakeside, where they lived, was a small town nestled in a rural area, surrounded by a few small farms, and bordered by public land popular with hikers, despite the proximity to woods. Town residents didn't often see much wildlife, especially in the winter. Deer occasionally wandered into yards looking for food, but that was about it. So the arrival of a bear, as Noah had claimed, was a rare occurrence. Bev wiped her hands and followed Noah, the little guide, out the door and onto the grass-lined sidewalk. There, Noah said proudly, I told you, there's the bear. It was a good thing she had grabbed her glasses before stepping out, because without them, Bev wouldn't have noticed the bear at all, you've got sharp eyes. Noah, Bev commented, can we go closer, Noah asked, his curiosity piqued, I want to see what he's doing, all right, Bev agreed, though she knew it was best to be cautious, but her curiosity mirrored Noah's, but you have to stick with me, okay, it's a wild animal, and we don't know what it's up to, Noah nodded, confident in his reasoning, I bet he's got a really good reason for coming here, and as it turned out, Noah was absolutely right. The bear had a very good reason for coming into town. Bev took Noah's hand, and together they walked along the edge of her yard, across the sidewalk, and down the next stretch of road. Then Noah stopped suddenly. Why is he walking like that? Grandma, he asked, puzzled. Bev's hand flew to her mouth in surprise. Bev quickly realized this wasn't just any stray bear. The animal was clearly injured, dragging its back leg behind it in a desperate attempt to move. But the most unsettling thing wasn't just the physical wound, it was the bear's entire demeanor, his defeated posture suggested a creature who had completely lost hope, perhaps driven mad by the combined pain and starvation from his inability to care for himself, it seemed that in his desperation, he had entered the village to plead for help, in that moment, something inside Bev shifted, whatever fear she had felt toward the bear dissolved, the sight of this massive animal. Struggling to maintain balance on front paws already buckling with exhaustion, was heart-wrenching. Without thinking, she quickened her pace, determined to help. Behind her, Noah tugged at her arm, his voice trembling with concern. No, Grandma, what if the bear hurts you? He won't, Bev said with complete conviction. Can't you see? He's hurt. We have to help him. Then, an idea struck her. She needed Noah to do something important. Leaning down to whisper in his ear, she said, Go quickly. Noah. Go get my phone from the kitchen. Noah didn't hesitate, dashing back toward the house with surprising speed. Bev heard the front door close behind him, but her attention was immediately drawn back to the bear. The creature tried to lift itself up, but its tired limbs refused to cooperate. With a heavy thud, the bear collapsed onto its side, letting out a pain squeal before its head dropped limply to the tarmac for a moment. Bev feared the bear had died right there and dreaded having to explain it to Noah when he returned, but then, to her immense relief, she saw the bear's chest rise and fall, he was still breathing, still alive, but for how long? Without hesitation, Bev approached the immobile creature, wanting to get a better look at his injuries, while she wasn't a veterinarian, she had grown up on a dairy farm and trusted her ability to assess situations involving animals. She was nearly at the bear's side when a new complication arose. The normally quiet streets of Lakeside were now disrupted by the sound of a delivery van turning onto the street, speeding toward the prone bear. If Bev didn't act quickly, the bear would be struck from behind. Noah came running back, breathless, shouting, Grandma, Grandma, look out. Bev instinctively raised her arms and yelled at the top of her lungs, Stop, stop, stop. In the back of her mind, she thought, I'm going to get us all killed this way, but, to her relief, the delivery van screeched to a halt just near the yard, only a few feet from the bear. The driver quickly stepped out and walked toward the animal, visibly shocked. Whoa, he exclaimed. I almost ran right over that. Thanks for stopping me. Do you know what happened to it? Noah's eyes went wide. Is he dead? Grandma, did he die? No, 
Bev replied firmly, he's not dead. Noah's face lit up, then we can save him, I hope so. Bev said, her voice steady, trying to reassure him as much as herself, daring the delivery driver to disagree with her, but the man surprised her with a helpful suggestion, I'm headed to W Street, he told her, my delivery is right near the police station, just across from it, I'll get the sheriff to send someone over, Bev had originally planned to dial 911, but instead, she called a different number on the phone Noah had brought to her when the line connected. She wasted no time explaining the situation, the person on the other end could hardly believe what they were hearing, Dr. Thomas Moore, a small-town veterinarian, had spent over two decades handling routine cases, skin allergies, elderly dogs with arthritis, routine pet sterilizations, and the occasional horse with a kink in its neck, he was known for his steady hand and calm demeanor in his work, but today would push him into uncharted territory, he'd been expecting a call like this. Earlier that morning, one of his regular clients, a woman who ran a riding stable, had contacted him about an injured bear, her riders had spotted it just off one of their trails. Dr. Moore immediately called a colleague who volunteered at a nearby wildlife sanctuary, and the two of them went to check the location where the bear had been seen, but when they arrived, the bear was nowhere to be found. The two men searched the area thoroughly, but the animal had seemingly disappeared, at first. They assumed it had been a false alarm, however, the rumor of the injured bear persisted, with reports that it was dragging one of its legs, so, Dr. Moore called it in. The bear had vanished once more, almost like a ghost, or maybe it was simply lying low due to its injuries and weakened state. Dr. Thomas Moore had finally pinpointed the bear's location, but the report suggested it was so frail it couldn't even stand. As he prepared his equipment and tranquilizers, Dr. Moore couldn't help but reflect on how unprepared he felt for the situation, but when he reached the location, something astonishing occurred, while Bev and her grandson Noah waited for help. More neighbors gathered around to keep vigil over the ailing bear. One man had even parked his truck across the road to block traffic, grumbling, old Frank, a local, muttered, this is a death watch, the poor creature's dying as we speak, though his words were grim, no one else dared to fully accept the possibility, Bev squeezed Noah's hand tightly, hoping the faint rise and fall of the bear's chest was a sign of life, then, just as hope seemed to fade, a surprising event sparked new life in them all. Darlene Marlton, who lived across from Bev, had brought a bottle of honey, she carefully poured some into the bear's mouth, the bear licked its lips and, to everyone's astonishment, opened its eyes, it looked up at the group, clearly surprised, the bear licked its lips again, and Darlene added more honey, miraculously, the bear seemed to revive, with a soft grunt, it lifted its head and weakly stretched its uninjured front paws, attempting to rise despite its obvious struggle, we need to help him up, one man named Bill suggested, no. No, another person disagreed, he needs to stay still, before a decision could be made, someone else took charge, Bev wasn't surprised to see Sheriff Pat Walton arriving in his squad car, he was known for being hands-on in situations like this, Sheriff Pat Walton wasn't alone, trailing behind him was Dr. Thomas Moore, the town's senior veterinary practitioner, many of the locals who had gathered to assist remained at the scene observing intently as Dr. Moore prepared a sedative. He could feel the weight of their scrutiny as he faced his first obstacle. Normally, Dr. Moore would weigh an animal before administering any medication, but with the bear, that was impossible. He'd read about a method researchers used, a sliding scale based on chest girth to estimate an animal's weight. Scanning the crowd, he spotted Jeff Monkley, a skilled woodworker. Dr. Moore pulled him aside and explained the situation. Jeff nodded and dashed up the road. Returning moments later with a tape measure, Dr. Moore exhaled in relief, took the tape, and bent over the bear to make his calculations. Though the dosage was still an estimate, he had to account for the bear's weakened condition. Once the bear was sedated, Dr. Moore carefully examined its injuries. He discovered fractures in two different places, worsened by the bear's journey into the town. Additionally, the bear had a serious wound that had become infected. But treating these injuries was only part of the challenge. Dr. Moore knew the bear needed surgery, but getting it to the operating table was another issue. Sheriff Walton, however, was unshaken. You'll need a horse trailer, he said casually. Dr. Moore knew just the people who could help and, within 30 minutes, had secured a trailer. Next came the heavy lifting. The adult male bear was far too large to move alone, so with the help of the bystanders, Dr. Moore placed the bear onto a sheet of tarp, on the count of three. 
They heaved the bear gently onto a bed of straw in the trailer, completely sedated. The bear remained unaware of the commotion around it, but just as they completed the task, an unexpected sound rippled through the crowd. A round of applause broke out from one of the onlookers. It was Noah Stedman, and his clapping echoed through the crowd. The relief on everyone's faces was palpable. And soon several of the adults joined in, recognizing the gravity of the situation, they had come together to do something remarkable, something heroic, and it was a young boy who saw it first, a few people followed Dr. Moore and Sheriff Walton back to the veterinary clinic, where Dr. Moore quickly transformed a garden area into a makeshift enclosure for the bear, the wound needed cleaning, stitches were required, and the bear's leg had to be set, with determination. Dr. Moore got to work, by late afternoon, the bear stirred groggily, clearly irritated, but as Dr. Moore later reported, this was a positive sign, it meant the treatment had been effective and the bear was on the road to recovery. For the next week, the bear stayed in the special enclosure behind Dr. Moore's clinic, slowly recuperating. Surprisingly, the bear attracted quite a few visitors, locals who came by to check on him, offering well wishes and support, as the days passed. The bear became something of a mascot for the community, a symbol of hope and resilience, as the bear regained his strength and became more active, he was moved to a wildlife sanctuary, three months later, he had made a full recovery and was released back into the wild where he truly belonged, what a lucky bear, to have wandered into a town of such kind-hearted people, after watching the story above, do you have any thoughts, feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel, that all about today's stories, see you next time.